Okay, so in this video, we're going to do another um, AP problem. This is from the AP Physics B exam from 2000, and it's a quite difficult um, incline plane pulley system problem. But if you have a good, um, if you're good with forces and if you understand the concept, then this should not be hard. Okay, so let's start the problem. Blocks one and two of masses M1 and M2 respectively are connected by a light string as shown above. These blocks are further connected to a block of mass M by another light string that passes over a pulley of negligible mass and friction. Blocks one and two move with constant velocity V down the inclined plane, which is an angle theta with the horizontal. The kinetic frictional force on block one is F and that on block two is 2F. So part A, on the figure below, draw and label all the forces on block M1. Okay, so we of course have gravity. So M1G. Okay, then we have our frick, uh, sorry, our normal force. That's Fn or just N if you want. Then we have a friction force. F. Okay, so that's our um, diagram. So part B, determine the coefficient of kinetic friction between the inclined plane and block one. <coughs> All right, so let's, so we are asked to express your answers in each of the following in terms of M1, M2, G, theta, and F. Okay, so this is M1, G, I'm just redoing like, another free body diagram so we can analyze it further so this is f use red to split these up into components this is m 1 g cosine theta remember from dynamics by inclined like components on an inclined plane this is m 1 g sine theta Right? So if that, if it's not moving, like, off the surface, that means the normal force must equal M1G cosine theta. So if we're doing part B, so the friction force equals mu Fn, right? So that's F on block one equals mu times m1g cosine theta. That means mu equal f divided by m1g cosine of theta. All right, so that's, that's the answer to part B. Okay, so to part C, Determine the value of the suspended mass M that allows blocks 1 and 2 to move with constant velocity down the plane. So, if you want constant velocity, that means the net force must equal 0. So, almost think of it as M1 and M2 as a combined mass. Think of it as a combined mass, right? Oh, and um, that just realized there's tension between those masses as well. So for part right here, there'll be tension as well. So T, okay. Now that I've mentioned that, so they determine the value of the suspended mass M that allows block one and two to move with constant velocity down the plane. All right. That means net force must equal zero, right? 
So, so if we treat the entire system as one mass, right? Treat the system as one mass and only count the external forces on the on the on the system we have. So we're going to treat up the pulley and down the ramp as positive. That means we have the acceleration is zero, so that will equal the external forces. That means m1 g sine theta plus m2 g sine theta, right? Tension does not count because the tension is an internal force. It acts like on two of the blocks. It can be canceled out, so no tension. Our friction acts only, only on exclusively on different blocks. So tension the friction for block one is F, so we're subtracting 2F and then um mg. So gravity will up for our big M will also oppose the the this thing, the how do I say it? Yes, it will also oppose the motion of the system and all that will be divided as the total mass of the system so m1 plus m2 plus m okay so if you multiply both sides by m1 plus m2 plus m well zero times any one thing equals zero so that's m1 g sine theta plus m2 g sine theta minus 3f f minus 2f negative f minus 2f equals negative 3f minus mg equals 0. all right so we're going to bring mg to the right so we have mg equals m1g sine theta plus m2g sine theta minus 3f divide both sides by g right and we get m equals well um m1 m will basically equal this or if you want to, you could split this fraction up then the G's will go away from the first two terms. So that will just be M1 sine theta plus M2 sine theta minus 3F over G. All right, let me just erase these spare marks. All right, so let's go to part D. The string between blocks one and two is now cut. Determine the acceleration of block one while it is on the inclined plane. All right, so if the string's cut, then it's not burdened by tension and all the other blocks. So it'll just move as if it's just sliding down the incline. So the acceleration, we just use Newton's second law, equals the net force over the mass. That is m1g sine theta minus f over for m1, right? And you can split the fraction again, and you'll get g sine theta minus f over m1. So either of these two answers can work. This is our answer for part c. Or you could do the long way. And that's for part b, and that's for part a.
All right, so hopefully you've seen how we do this problem. If any questions, just comment below. Thanks for watching.